All right, who cares? Let's do a podcast. Yeah, I was about to say. Um, oh, Mr. Press for Press Times. Times. Yeah, listen. What are you listen. doing after this? It's so important. Well, welcome to, well, there's your problem. Doesn't answer, right? A, a podcast about engineering <laughs> disasters with slides. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who is talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. I'm the person who is talking now. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Hi, I'm Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he, him. And we have a guest. We were going to have two, but then one uh, died. Yes, yeah, Nate, Nate, Nate is unwell and sends his apologies. So we have one half of what a hell of a way to die. It's Francis. It's Francis. I'm the one talking. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, that's never a thing that I've had to do on a show. That's very exciting. Oh, we um, do it to make the gamers mad. I, oh, yeah. I hope that's that's exactly why I did it. I've I managed to piss off a lot of Marxist Leninists today, so I'm here oh, to piss off of people. Proud of you. That's did, my did you boy. say that China wasn't perfect? No, I said that um uh that arguing about reading books is dumb. Oh uh, well that is true. I mean, but, you know, because I mean the entirety of, of Marxist Leninism is surrounded by doing books, homework so. for fun. Right. Yeah. 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 If, if they right. didn't spend so much time arguing about reading books, they could read more books. I, I don't understand. <laughs> this seems like what an if, unproductive use of time. What, what Marx <laughs> failed to predict was the transformative power of the slideshow. But yes. which is both the format, <laughs> the format of our podcast and the subject of our podcast. Yes. Whoa, 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 it's meta. We're doing, a, we're doing a show about how our show is actually bad. That's oh, right. Yeah, this, yes. this shit sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, look, keep, you idiots keep giving us money and we don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm surprised that, you know, as a, a show that relies on PowerPoint, you haven't done an episode on terrible PowerPoint yet, but I guess it's not technically engineering. It required me to come to you and be like, uh, this is, well, this is an insane thing that we do in the military. I don't know if it's an insane thing that's done in the civilian world, but the military oh, is yeah, a dude. real, we have a yeah. hard on for the fucking PowerPoint. It's weird. Mm. I, I, I kind of believe that like the, uh, the upward trajectory of PowerPoint coming out in 1996 glues itself directly to the upward trajectory of the war on terror. <laughs> um, you know, from the from from Oklahoma City straight through Afghanistan and right on up to right now, you know, we've got uh, <laughs> we've got 20, you know, 25 fucking years here of of PowerPoint and, and PowerPoint in the military. The problem the problem with the military is that the military understands that soldiers are dumb um, mm. and they make it really, really, really easy by uh, creating field manuals and technical manuals. Um, if you want to know how to wear a uniform, there is literally a book. That says exactly how to do it. How yeah, to, so if you're trying to steal valor, you just right. go and pick that up. You go find right. the book. Or yeah, yeah uh, six AR six seventy one Army Regulation six seventy one. Go crazy, steal some valor, but make it look <laughs> good. You know, stack your ribbons correctly. <laughs> but there is no training, nothing on PowerPoint. Yet we are all expected to use it on a regular basis. Like it's just it's just a given that at some point in time, when you become a sergeant, you are going to have to create. A PowerPoint presentation because you're going to have to explain something to a bunch of soldiers. And the best medium, the and when I say best, I mean the laziest medium, is a computer that hardly works that takes uh, 40 minutes to log into because Army networks suck. And then to build a PowerPoint uh, a PowerPoint presentation and then read the slides directly to the people. Um, and that's what that we're going to do for you tonight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But By the end I, of this, you'll all be private first classes. Exactly. <laughs> the, I, upon the completion of this podcast, I'm going to mail everyone a gun. <laughs> Don't send that to the P.O. box. We'll get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> or at least include one for the postal worker when they finally had enough. I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to wrap it, but not in a box. It's going to actually look like an M16. Just like wrap things directly around. Wrap the trigger by itself. Just a little bit of uh, Christmas paper. <laughs> what is it? This is the ATF's <laughs> new most listened to podcast. <laughs> not for me, man. I'm in Missouri. Man, guns are, guns are real easy to get a hold of mm. here. I always, I always think about 3D printing. I'm just like, I can just literally buy a gun from anybody. It doesn't matter. The thing matter. about 3D printed guns, right, is that like, even when the people who like them, and I mean really like them, are right, they're still so annoying that they're you so want them to be wrong. Yeah. Like, there, was, there was this thing, right, about this, uh, this 3D printed gun guy in Germany. 
uh, who died. And like, there are lots of like uh, sort of weepy tweets about this. Um, and the way that he died, they're acting as if he was martyred. The, the German cops where he lived raided his apartment because he kept 3D printing guns, and he had a heart attack and died. And <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I will not apologize for thinking that that's extremely funny. No, that's funny. That's... But be before we get raided by the ATF, it is we, we have to do the goddamn news. Ah, oh, fuck. Shit. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, God damn it. Backs. How the fuck did- mm, Shit, shit, yeah, shit, shit, yeah. shit, 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 shit. Hell yeah, welcome to that WTYP house mix, baby. There okay. we go. Okay, so I, got it. I I I set I set shake hands with danger to fade out when I pressed instead of the news. Who's calling me? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is such a fucking a, a incompetent man, podcast. Professional podcasting oh, right yeah. here. A man has leaked classified information about a tank on the War Thunder forms in order to win an argument. This I mean, is not the first time this has happened this nope. year, in fact. Nope. <laughs> it, it, it happened with, it was another war game, right? I, I don't remember which one it was. World of Tanks, maybe? World of Tanks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some guy leaked a classified like field manual for a tank in order to win an argument that the developers were portraying this tank incorrectly. Which, like, is kind of a, you know, you, you, you kind of have to give it to them for not getting that right by guessing, because it's literally top secret information. Like and and honestly, at this point, if they did upgrade a tank with those with that new information, I feel like War Thunder is now like privy to handing mm -hmm. out um, classified information to the rest of <laughs> to a bunch of nerd gamers. It's just like, well, now they know we use the JP eight, and you know we we do the uh, and I don't know fucking inside of tanks or anything, but like it's always some weird nerdy shit in the middle. It's not like. How big is the gun? How fast does it go? Which is like actual tank stuff that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's like it's it's a measurement of like some millimeters from one thing to another thing that means nothing to normal people. But if you've become one of the sort of like gremlin hobbit motherfuckers who lives inside of a tank, <laughs> then this means everything to you. But I spent twenty years in the army, and the most irritating people in the military, well. Not the most, but one of the most. <laughs> one of the most irritating people are all the armor people, all the dudes that are really into tanks, because like, you know, a gun is is obviously an extension for a penis, right? Mm, but yes. imagine if you had a main battle tank that is now the extension for your penis. So there's a lot of swagger that goes on. Um, but now what we have is and like Kasabian somebody who, smells like poop, right? Oh, somebody, yeah. We have somebody who is like that already, and then also like that on com about computer games. And I know a lot of fucking tanker nerds that that play War, T War Thunder or World of Tanks or whatever. And there's a lot of complaining about it. And goddamn, if I just don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're tankers, man. They don't have real feelings. <laughs> damn, dude. <laughs> this reminds me of um uh so. Back when Get Smart was on television. Wow. Um, they kept, uh, <laughs> so, you know, they had uh, all the all the classic, like, uh, you know, gag, um, you know, secret spy stuff, like the cone of silence, like the shoe phone, like uh, a whole bunch of other wacky stuff like that. The, they, the, Havana, they, the Havana syndrome, Ray. Right. Yeah. I remember it. Well, right. they actually got a call from, I think, the CIA because... They were actually working on developing some of that shit, and they thought they had got something that had been leaked. <laughs> <laughs> well, th this happened. Can you uh, imagine with, having to feel like, that phone call too? Like you're a hmm. hungover Hollywood producer. You've been just snorting lines for the last ten to fourteen hours. Some guys <laughs> just like are. What do you know? This happened with the most boomer form of gaming, newspaper crosswords, because <laughs> it, in, ad, in advance of uh, Operation Overlord, the Normandy landings in 1944, uh, a British newspaper crossword kept using clues that had been randomly selected code names for different aspects of the operation. And so they had to go and interview this, like, I don't know, fucking 80-year-old Oxford Don or whatever who was setting crossword clues. They're just like, why did you pick these random words? And it was pure coincidence. It's just there's only so many fucking random words you can pick in English. 
Yeah, oh, when, you set up, when you set up a pirate radio station and accidentally overtake all of the uh, number stations and suddenly, <laughs> yeah. Accident, like, yeah, I'm going to set up my own AM radio feed and start playing my my weird chiptune stuff and then start World War III. <laughs> yeah, chiptune version of the Lincolnshire Poacher operating <laughs> off, of, uh, off of Cyprus, yeah. Good lord. Video games were a mistake. Yes, yes. unfortunately. <laughs> Video games were a mistake. Tanks were a mistake. Armor no, culture was a mistake. Back. You live, you live, cool. you live in a minivan, and you live in a minivan. Not anymore. It's... <laughs> we should have done. We should just do the Lord of the Rings thing and just fight with swords and shields for thousands of years. Because that's right. That's because right. technology does not no, advance in Middle Earth. <laughs> no, this pe- like warfare peaked with dragoons. <laughs> As soon as you get on a horse, man, I'm I'm out. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you're on a horse. Your cavalry. You know what you are. You're a little bitch. Get down here. <laughs> Pull your sword out. Get into the fucking. Get into the. Come, uh, come down here and fight. <laughs> yeah, fight. Fight me like a man. A, a APC rolls up and it's just guys on horses come out the back. <laughs> really long. How, yeah, how many guys on horses trailer. can you fit inside an armored? An armored can we have a, an separate? armored Prussian carrier? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's got a big spike on top. <laughs> it doesn't add anything. We just think it looks nice. <laughs> All right. That was the goddamn news. Hey, oh, that didn't play twice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Alice. So let's talk about PowerPoint. Yeah, Francis, yeah. you wrote these slides, and yeah. the slides are a selection of horrible military PowerPoints, right? They are, and and I ha- and can you? Uh, sorry, can uh, you ma- maximize it so I can see what the PowerPoint oh. is? Like I, I just Not see yet. a grainy Rambo. I need to hmm. see grainy Rambo larger. Mm, you may need to like follow along in your own copy of the uh, the yeah. handout here. Okay, yeah, it should be, hold on. Should be maximized. No, or it's that fine. Be I got something it. you have to do on your end. I'm pulling it up right now. All right, so are we uh, are we starting with uh, with Rambo, or are we starting with the screaming Air Force guy? I kind of Which, like starting yeah. with Rambo because, yeah. like, Rambo. this is so uh, it's so low resolution, and it's like I have taken the first Google Images result and I have now, edited that. Now I want you to also read the top. This is a JAG pre-deployment training. These are the lawyers. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, this boy. is how not to do war crimes. Fuck! <laughs> oh boy! Or this is how to like you know um, understand war crimes and uh, possibly cover them up. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> this is the only the only image I have from this uh, this particular one. So um, you know everybody loves the the image of Rambo uh, or the, the Rambo three dedicated to the brave Mujahideen fighters, which technically never existed, but it's very fun to imagine yeah. it did. Yeah. However, yes. however, we love Rambo. We love, uh, we love killing Soviets. And mm-hmm. man, if there's one person who uh, exemplifies all of this, it would be, it would be Rambo. I have no. to imagine that this is probably from like 2003 or something because oh, yeah. like, because nobody knows, like, let's be honest. If you got a room full of fucking 25 year old privates and uh, lawyers who are lieutenants and stuff, do any of them know who the fuck Rambo is? Like, is that <laughs> fucking should? Jesus Christ, it's a cultural touchstone. I, I, I like very much that this is like the question slide, the thing that you put in last, right? And so all of these, this is this is a sort of a rare attempt at military humor in an official capacity. So it's not like the jokes that soldiers tell each other. It's like the joke you can get away with at the end of a presentation to try and lighten the mood. <laughs> and also, this is a very good question that hopefully they covered. In in here about you know the Mu- Mujahideen, the Taliban, <laughs> the difference between Al Qaeda, ISIS, maybe depending on what year this is. But no, I'm sure this is just like somebody um, slapped this up in Microsoft Paint and threw some word bubbles onto yeah, get, it. Get, yeah. a, get a cheap laugh at the end of a kind of a dry subject matter. <laughs> Al Shabab and you, a, sh- a soldier's guide. Oh yeah, the, like it, uh, largely the the U.S. military is built on duct tape and iFunny.co. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah, they stole this from Funny that's, that's or Die or something. That's critical infrastructure, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the um, all the meme generators are actually on military servers. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so th- this is a little kind of insubstantial. The next one, 
Oh boy. I could talk about this one for the full hour. This is this was called the Spaghetti and Meatballs diagram Jesus by a lot of people. <laughs> uh, and th this is a diagram of how to win the war in Afghanistan. Um, and as Stanley McChrystal once said, when we understand this diagram, he was joking in his defense, we will be able to win the war. <laughs> and here we are. No, Nobody we knows it. what the no, fuck this it. is. We want it. Shut up. <laughs> so if you actually look at this thing, this is like things, that, these are like things that people want a government to be able to do, right? But it's divided up into, into sectors, and then all of those sectors are mushed in together, uh, because they have linked every possible thing they could link. Now, I, the, the thing is, is that the end product is insane, obviously, and I really, like, if I could get anybody onto my show regarding slideshows it would be whoever had to create this whoever yes. like because th this isn't random somebody somebody had an idea here they had a workflow they had they were linking things so you got arrows going all over the place and 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 i gotta be honest it looks like for as much of a mess as it, as it is it looks very clean um unlike uh, many of the slides that you're gonna see that have like all fucked up formatting issues and everything but this like it doesn't make sense, but it looks good, kind of. Yeah. Like it's it's, it's perfect it, staff officer brain is what this is. This is the kind of person who like goes home and designs a tabletop war game in their spare time <laughs> yeah. for fun. Yeah, this is the guy. This is somebody who's like, there's not enough rules in Warhammer 40k. <laughs> well, this is uh, sort of, um, I think one of the one of the fundamental things with uh, PowerPoint, right, is that um, you know, it's it's very bad at um, uh, what's the word? communicating complex ideas, right? Right, because that's you know, not this really is, what it's designed to do. Um, well, it sort of makes people simplify their thinking to fit in bullet points. Yeah. Like, that's one of the big ones. I'm just sort of quoting liberally here from the cognitive style of PowerPoint, which is an old essay from an IBM guy about um, how PowerPoint messes with people's thinking. Um, now, this is, mm, I think, kind of glass houses bad. there once you get yeah. into the cognitive structure of IBM guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> First, this, find a punch card. <laughs> <laughs> this is sort of like, I mean, I, when you think about this as a, something presented in a PowerPoint, like, okay, number one, who is looking at it? Are, there, are, are they able to read any of this, right? Um, number two is, how long is this up on the screen for? Does this convey any uh, information at all in the PowerPoint format? Um, you know, it's not it's not very clear why you would put this very complex diagram onto a PowerPoint presentation. This might make more sense if it were like a handout people could look at for a while. Right. But um, you know, if it's up yeah. there on the screen far away, oh boy. But this sort of <laughs> like this, they, this they sort of use Visio in the army. No, because Visio costs too much money. Okay, that answers my question. <laughs> but there and, is a sort also, of like broader strategic point to this, which is this is like the sort of McNamaraization of uh, of of like American defense policy, right? Is you have to have measurable goals. You have to right. be able to put all of those goals into a big yeah. spreadsheet, and then you punch all of those in, and you get the right answer, which is uh, you know a secular liberal democracy in Afghanistan or yes. whatever. Yeah, this and and the the creation of this it just reminds me of what the last time I was in Iraq and the first ID came in, and there was a sergeant major that like the commander wanted this like uh, they, every time a new infantry unit takes over an area in in Iraq or Afghanistan they want to put their fucking marks all over the place. So his was uh, they wanted this like a Syrian like symbol of Iraq, which is a, uh, the, the face of, of this Assyrian king and the body of a lion and uh, the wings of an eagle or something like that. But like this, this, this sergeant major kept coming back because the image that I found stole off the internet and then put onto this thing as I, <laughs> as is how most of my uh, PowerPointing does. Um, it didn't have, it didn't have a dick pouch on the bottom of it. Fuckers. So, <laughs> So, you know, like you look at the underneath a male horse, it's kind of, it doesn't have the dick necessarily hanging out, but it's got a dick pouch. It's kind of like hanging there. That's where you know the dick comes out of. Like he, they wanted the command, the, the commander or some officer somewhere was demanding that I make this thing look more male by like putting a dick pouch on it. And <laughs> I swear to God, I had to Photoshop a dick pouch onto this. And it's one of those just like, Look, man. Whatever the fuck you want, I just want to leave right now. I just want to go home. I want to go back. I want to go back to my chew. I want to smoke a cigarette. I want to fucking drink some bootleg wine and go to bed. 
and not think about this dick pouch anymore. <laughs> and that's what I feel like this is this is coin dick pouch right here. This is some lieutenant or some captain was just like fucking whatever here you want it all in there there it is enjoy goodbye <laughs> well i'm probably paid some sort of consulting group to do this oh yeah there's which a is even consulting worse. group thing down in the corner here oh god so it wasn't even like uh it wasn't even an officer they had a mckinsey guy come in to do this to present this to them well, they probably yelled at the mckinsey guy to do it and he was like all right and he, he billed them like 48 hours at a rate of like ten thousand dollars an hour to put this one slide together <laughs> hey, man, it's good work if you can find it <laughs> which paid. you know it kind of makes sense because it looks so clean that it couldn't have been done by a soldier wait did, did did pa consulting make this or are they just like highlighting this like that this is their no, thing they i feel like they, they, they produced the fucking ch i'm looking this up they did make this just incredible, and they they have a thing on their um. They have a statement about this Afghan spaghetti graph. Um, they have a statement on it. <laughs> oh yeah, do you want me to read their PR statement on this? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yes, we, we thoroughly agree that thoughtless use of PowerPoints is pervasive and corrosive, particularly an over reliance on dot points and oversimplification of message. However, ours was far from being oversimplistic, using mm. instead a well-known technique, <laughs> system dynamics, to review a highly complex situation. Unlike linear thinking, the default mode of the human brain, system dynamics thinks about repercussions and occasionally <laughs> unintended consequences. You don't understand this because your squishy human brain is too yeah. fucking the stupid. The chart was published without context. It was designed to be part of a broad briefing where it was slowly revealed alongside a verbal description of each major element. The chart, with its attempt to grapple with complexity, was a dream for those wanting to respond trivially. No, it <laughs> <laughs> but do, no, but do we really want simplistic philosophies to win out in defense thinking? Or do we want strategies developed that take no account of complexity and the sometimes counterintuitive outcomes of well-intentioned actions? So, I mean, their this answer is essentially thank you, is... Thank you resignation letter. Oh, you, you, you're too stupid to understand this. Well, while you're being too stupid to understand this, we're busy winning the war in Afghanistan. You're welcome. I could yeah, say... That, shout out to Mayor Pete for this one. Yeah. Yeah, you need a Mayor Pete brain to understand it. Though, mm. I could see this making a lot more sense if, as they say, this was revealed slowly over the course of the whole presentation, as opposed to just this info dump right in your face that you can't make heads or tails of. Um, mm. I could see if there were like a talented presenter, which is, you know, another another PowerPoint thing is that, you know, a lot of times, you know, the PowerPoint itself is sort of... um a, uh, a a substitute for any talent on the presenter's uh, behalf. Yeah, um, it's kind of a crutch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See also this podcast. Um, well, I mean, see <laughs> see also every meeting in the United States military. Like if you if you are going into a meeting in the army, like somebody has to present something, one hundred percent you're going to see uh, a bunch of PowerPoint. Like even if you even if it's like, oh, we're going to do medical training, we're going to teach you guys how to you know bandage up a head or whatever. There's going to be a PowerPoint, even if you have bandages to fucking do the band the head bandages in, because you've got to like. <clears throat> well, like you thing. say, Before, they don't teach people to present anything. They right? don't. They don't teach. They they don't teach you how to use PowerPoint. You um and you get shit on if you don't do it right. And and I'm going to tell you that public speaking and leading a meeting is not something that everybody can do, and you shouldn't expect everybody to do it. I you know there are plenty of people who in the military who don't go very far because they're not leadership material and that's fine, but it means you can't advance in the military if you don't take a leadership role. And it's the same kind of thing here. You don't get a whole lot of, uh, this doesn't, th this training doesn't come around for you and it will hurt you if you're not properly trained in it and nobody's going to train you in it. Like I've mm. been, I've been to classes to teach me how to write memos I've been to classes to teach me how to write stories for the army, but never anything of here's how to do a PowerPoint presentation. Maybe they do something now. I haven't been to any real classes for the military since like 2014, but like PowerPoint has been around since the beginning of the Afghan war. I feel like there should have been some kind of training in it. Just, you know, a here's how to talk to people. Here's how to run a PowerPoint presentation. They spend more time. So here, here's a really fucked up thing. Um, there's this thing called a safety brief, right? So the safety brief is the thing you do before you do anything, 
where like, oh, we're going to go out and fucking qualify on our rifles, right? We're going to do our shooting and everything. The safety brief beforehand is, all right, we're going out. Here's, uh, here's the things that you need to watch out for weather wise, gun wise. Um, we're going to be out here. Here's where the bathrooms are. Here's where the combat lifesavers are. If there's a problem, here's who to call. If there's a big problem, if there's fire on the range like you know just the random fire just catches like it does sometimes out in the middle of nowhere in the year of our lord 2021 in america you know (laughs) if any of these things happen you have to have a fucking safety brief before a powerpoint presentation the safety brief before the powerpoint presentation has i have been given more information on how to do that it's called a risk assessment where you have to say like all right well if there's a fire in the building here's where the exits from this literal classroom is which like just look um, there's, if the projector falls on a guy, right. then <laughs> right here's the here's the uh, the splints in case the projector falls and breaks on breaks somebody's leg. But you know you have to tell people like, oh, watch out for you know cords on the floor. Don't trip over them; those are trip hazards. If you feel like you're falling asleep, you have to go stand up in the back of uh, like they ask you to just, like <laughs> if you're if you're falling asleep at your desk, get up and stand in the back. And like, you know, a really good PowerPoint presentation when there's like half a dozen dudes standing in the back, leaning <laughs> against the wall, <laughs> le- le- leaning, doing that leisurely lean against the wall kind of thing where it's just like, I can take half a nap over here and nobody can technically yell at me for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting micro sleep. I'm like yeah. torturing myself a little bit. Can we talk about this next slide here? Because uh, I'm, I'm skipping is, ahead a little bit. This is and, interesting. Uh, We've got a couple of things here. We've got some some triumphs of military graphic design. Oh, graphic design is my passion. But also, we have some unit pride. And I love unit pride. I love unit cohesion. I love to, like, basically nickname my unit of janitors Warriors of the Pacific and give us a big cool logo. I like these it. Are, look, th- this, so these are Marines because they've got the, the Bulldog. Um, bulldogs with vampire fangs, I don't get it, but sure. But yeah, this is like... That image, I guarantee that that image was created and has been put on so many things that people are so proud of. This, like, where the the warriors of the Pacific, I don't know where these guys are out of, probably Okinawa or maybe South Korea. Probably, I don't know about the, the, the Rakasan, it's probably South Korea. But, like, the thing at the top, just how to find your computer name is, like, the most boomer ass oh, shit. Capitalized F say. for some reason, lowercase <laughs> Y. <laughs> Yeah, capital C, capital N. Your come your on, guys. At least get the case. Yeah, get the casing right. I'm glad that they got the right your on there. All right. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> um, I don't like the um the way this has been uh, justified in such a way that name is on its own line. Yeah, I like that. Uh, that they probably should have uh you know separated it you know somewhere. I forget the line breaks. I, I, I love I love the the sidebar so that yeah. you know that knowledge <laughs> is the key. But then there's a picture of a, a lock which is but it's a unlocked key. already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah by by your knowledge. Um you know they got this nice gradient here. You know, I had a little bit of style. <laughs> yeah. Right. And this and this is thing- improper title case though. <laughs> All yeah. of these things, all of these things are created by dicking around on on um on the, on PowerPoint and then just being like, yeah, that looks cool. And then just running with it. And, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not going to dog anybody for not knowing what their computer name is. That's, you know, you, you have to have like kind of a, a little bit slightly higher level of knowledge of a, a computer. But like just the entire presentation of this, of this angry bulldog and these these um, artillery pieces ready to fire. And it's just like, we're, we're going to send a fucking message to the Chinese. And that message is, here's how to find your fucking computer, you bitch. <laughs> now, this next one. I lo- let's let's I, look I, at like I, the mm. opposite direction. This is uh, an actual picture of a soldier making a PowerPoint. <laughs> um, I, call, I, I call this uh, checking her Instagram at 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> I love Ghost Recon 2, Advanced Warfighter. <laughs> like... The the great thing about a lot of these graphics is that they they try to portray like the military that they want, like the you know the the Donald Rumsfeld you go to war with the military you have not the military you wish you had. If you wondered what ever wondered what's the military you wish you had, it's this guy with his weird computer cyborg eye looking at five different tabs of Twitter. 
<laughs> you see, you see, there's um, Matrix uh, code dropping down in the background here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that old bootleg Windows screen saver. Yeah. yeah. And he's got flying toasters on one of the uh, on one of the screens. I like how they're overlaying each other, like like Photoshop layers. Like he's uh, he's doing some. You know those books where you uh, move the, the the clear thing, and you can see the skeleton, and then the uh, the, yeah. the, oh, the yeah. muscles, and then the yeah. That's what we're doing, except it's porn. It's really convenient <laughs> to be able to have to like to have to do the minority report, like swooshing through file folders and stuff in like a hundred degree heat. <laughs> yeah, and and in reality, this wouldn't work because they're you know you probably wouldn't have the correct batteries for it because nothing in the army runs on normal batteries. You always, you always have to order some weird fucking lithium battery from you know god knows where and it takes six months to show up and then you plug it into your shit and then find out it doesn't work anyway but i also like i i want to know like is this guy just dropping down in the middle of afghanistan to pull this up like oh, yeah, he's normal- on a totally bare hillside yeah. <laughs> i was about to say it's not a conspicuous target at all <laughs> it's okay he's got he's got digi camo which blends in with computer technology <laughs> <laughs> right, we, we can't shoot the soldier because he's got so many of these screens floating around him. We just don't know where he is. yeah his, his uh he he was his life was saved by a tab he had open with the uh, bible.com on it <laughs> yeah but if he opens one more tab the whole thing crashes and everybody's gonna see him <laughs> fucking google chrome sure i knew we should have updated from four gigs of ram now we have we have another example, a very similar one, but with an extra feature of arrows of things that don't connect to other things <laughs> yes. in any meaningful way. Is this this whole server room is contained in what that the- tablet? I, I think it's great that they let him go to, has led to so many modern miracles. I think it's cool that they let him go to the war in like low top sneakers and like high socks. That's cool. Hell yeah, like, like the tactical knee socks. He's those. like bloused his pants into his socks too. Like is, is this Mayor tra- Pete in the second one? <laughs> also, this is like a some sort of Lithuanian um, camouflage pattern. I don't know where the fuck they got this from. But it does say artist concept down in the bottom, just in case you were concerned oh. that this might be real. Good, good, to, good to know. <laughs> Top image. Look at this sick shit I found on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if if the military had nothing but unlimited connection to the uh, to the internet and each other, one hundred percent, what would we be doing? <laughs> just sending nudes back and forth. <laughs> well, what else are you gonna do? You know. Listen, sometimes you have to open your perfectly square tablet and then compress a server farm, um, a bunch of computers, and a guy looking at Pornhub on a tough book into it. Man, I want a that's tough the, book so that, fucking that's, bad. To be honest, that's how we really thought that we were going to win Afghanistan. It's just like, <laughs> what, if we gave, what if we gave all the Afghans porn? Wouldn't that make them happy? Yeah, but I, ironically, you, you showed this to like a shura of Afghan but, leaders. I mean, it was oh, like... <laughs> Osama bin Laden downloaded a shitload of porn. Oh, that's yeah. true. How, how, many, true. How, many, how, many, how many 9-11s did he do after he did that? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can't be sure. Well, I mean, hey, Pornhub didn't really exist in 2001, so yeah, I don't know. Exactly. Where was he getting his porn back then? VHS mm. tapes. D- yeah, did like DVDs? Were DVDs even a thing by 2001? Oh, Probably yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was uh, a video <laughs> disc. It was a laser I, disc. Uh, we got our first DVD player as a family uh, for Hanukkah of 2001, maybe 2000. Oh, okay. And, so you were uh, still on that, like, VHS cast. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, look, we're Got all a bunch of those... children of 480p. Mm. Got those, no. uh, uh, the, the zip discs. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a floppy, but it's fatter. It's gonna revolutionize everything. Oh. F- first Oops. one of these that's gonna be actually top secret, classified, uh, it comes to us courtesy of Edward Snowden. Ah, uh, yes. And this is this is when the NSA started harvesting data from various platforms. One of the uh, things I've never really been able to wrap my head around is how the CIA uh, is ostensibly so good at their jobs, or uh, and, and by that I mean like intercepting intelligence, not the all the, the horrifically bad shit they do, hmm. but like then they make a PowerPoint that fucking looks like this. <laughs> yeah, I just pointed out something about this. So this is clearly set up as a graph. There is a yeah, large yeah. arrow pointing in an upper left direction. But it doesn't need to be a graph at all. The, yeah, there's the, no y-axis. There is no y-axis, as I have labeled here. 
Um, you know, this it's is just, just going a, up. This is a list of <laughs> Line dates. goes up. That means win. That means we're winning. <laughs> yeah, I, I have here this. Uh, I've just incinerated my entire life, and I have to go and live in Russia forever because of this graph that I've leaked that from the NSA that just says stonks. Was well, mm -hmm. this just done in Word? And the reason I'm asking is because of these bubbles. Ooh, like, I fuck it. Might have know, been done in Word. I think this was PowerPoint. I think this is Word. Because look at the and look at the uh, look at Facebook specifically. Why is that on two lines? Mm. Oh yeah, Facebook, I think this is done in Facebook, Word. Okay, <laughs> and, and I definitely and I wanted to add this one in because also, how is YouTube after Google if they're part of the same company? What did Google? How did buy they YouTube? only get AOL in in twenty yeah, eleven? AOL, the last bastion of privacy. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't even know what Pal Talk is. What? Would that that's a a thing that completely yeah. missed me. Is that some like European fucking chatting uh, must thing be. back then? Yeah, I, I apparently it's a proprietary video group chat service that enables users to communicate by video, internet chat, or voice. It offers chat rooms the ability for users to create their own public virtual chat room. Okay, so that like I'm presuming that like were you to extend this arrow outwards, it would have like Telegram and Signal and shit on there now. But like, probably. I like the uh, I like the Prism logo here. It has like the beveled edge, you know. Oh yeah, this has, is like, the, they got has, someone good to do the logo of the whole program. Oh, um, no, no, I was gonna say it's I, I was being sarcastic. It's actually very bad. Uh, I do like how they created their own shape for some reason. This They're like, true, let's do yeah. a hexagon, and then somebody said, "Shit, prism is too long. Well, you gotta put uh, an extra hexagon thing. on there." <laughs> <laughs> what if we put two hexagons next to each other? I also, I'm a really big fan of this because this has, if you look at the upper area, that's just a bunch of like somebody right clicking on a lot of logos yes. and yep. downloading, yes. and then just dragging and dropping them and putting that. Like, there's no rhyme or reason to it. And YouTube is pixelated as all fuck. Right, yeah, they're yeah. just, and you can see as like the person created it, they're like Gmail, Facebook, Yahoo, Google, Hotmail, Skype, and they're like, shit, I ran out of room, and I've got three other things to put on here. Uh, I'll talk YouTube, AOL, Mail, AOL. Right. It's, it's just a messenger. <laughs> this is a very <laughs> also a yes, very... I know this was the NSA and not the CIA. Yeah, you think the NSA you... were reading my fucking AOL instant yes, messages oh, they sure were. in 2011? Yeah, they sure were. As long as they weren't reading my ICQ shit back then. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, boy. Well, this is a very, very high effort way to present almost no information. Mm. But also, right. this is this is something that's uh, going to follow us into the next slide, which yes. is uh, the, the particular irritant of IT-based military oh, and uh, espionage PowerPoints. Because... Oh boy, have we got a networking diagram here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. Look, all soldiers are now sensor nodes, and also <laughs> I like the helicopters. That, six. The helicopters that I've never seen that we don't use anymore are now dropping. Are sensor nodes that are dropping sensor nodes? Every <laughs> sensor node is connected to uh, an IP network, which goes to a satellite dish, which. Goes to a blacked out version of the Three Little Pigs house, I imagine. Mm -hmm. I That's know. what it appears to be. That <laughs> represents <laughs> the military our, base. Uh, the military bases with chimneys, as we also, <laughs> as we often have. <laughs> yeah, Just anytime, perfect. anytime you have like a, even if you have like, so S six, uh, the six shop is our uh, the computer people. Anytime you have one of those people who has to like dumb shit down for the military. Like for everybody else, like they have to explain. Like, imagine any of us, we're all computer savvy. Imagine explaining a network, a complicated network, to like just some old Tory boomer. It yeah, wouldn't work. It, right. it, it, and an old Tory boomer who by this point could have spent like 20 years only being in the military. Like, of course, your starting point is going to be like, uh, yeah, a computer's kind of like a gun. I, and <laughs> these guns talk to each other. These these aren't like sensors that are actually on military equipment. This is a metaphor. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's explaining how computers work through the metaphor of like soldiers and having it like a, a tiger tank for some reason. Uh, it, we uh, also see some um, of the the high speed uh, combat socks on these sensor node soldiers of, uh, of ours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> Looks like they're wearing like Adidas slides to go to war. Which oh, I mean, yeah. fuck it, we just lost a war to people who wore Adidas slides. So this who am I going to say? <laughs> I thought it looked like they were wearing flats. Um, <laughs> yeah, make make me Minister of Defense or like Secretary of Defense. My only defense policy is let the soldiers wear sneakers to the war. It was it's good enough yes. for it's good enough for the Taliban. <laughs> 
when I when I went to Afghanistan, they gave me um, brand new boots, and I had not broken them in yet. And in Afghanistan, oh, the place no where thanks. I was living had um, a, you know, like a normal place would just have like gravel to walk on. This one had like it was gravel, but like if instead of small rocks, it was rocks about the size of your fist. Oh, so God. I was Ooh. I yeah, I constantly like was rolling my ankles and uh, basically got huge blisters on the back of my uh, my heels. So I got a soft shoe profile, which is basically you get to wear your running shoes everywhere. Man, most comfortable fucking three days I ever had in Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Just wandering around, just being like, nope, I get to wear, sh- I get to wear my tennies. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, I did not have a uh, Adidas shoes to wear then. Um, I could have really blended in with the local population. <laughs> oh, God. okay. This is an org chart for Operation Warp Speed, the, yes. the vaccine rollouts. This is a Donald uh, Trump uh, brought to us by, uh, by the president, by COVID itself, and another just insane info dump that, like, looking at this, my brain immediately turns off. It's like, I, I don't give a shit say, about any of this. This is, this is mm-hmm. the one where like, my eyes glaze over when they bring this slide up, and you're just like, get, get to the information, which is comprehensible, please. A- an- another <laughs> another sort of useful sin here is uh, the, like, uh, insistence on acronyms, right? Some of which, because yes. this is for Sorry, that says joint... FDA Woodcock and FDA DOD Woodcock. Bigger Staff. That's right. That's right. Uh, this is also like a joint civilian military operation. Like, half of the people on here are civilians, right? And, like, if you're in the military, right, it's reasonable to expect you to understand what, like, an XO is, right? If I'm some fucking, like, doctor at the CDC, how the fuck do I know what OPSEC is? Why do I need to know what OPSEC right. is? It's a very good uh, point. You pro- pro- somebody has probably explained it to you. I, look, mm-hmm. a lot of times these um, the military and the civilian, especially like on uh, engineer and medical sides, often work together. Um, but also, this is an insane org chart that nobody needs to see. Like for for my regular normal civilian job, like we see org charts, and somebody makes it in Visio because we're not insane, and it's like <laughs> here. You uh, fall under this person, and that person falls under this person. And look, here's nice little boxes that are under each other. And I understand Operation Warp Speed is probably a little bit um, more complicated than working in IT like I do, but it is not this fucking complicated. And I just, for these, I wonder who is in the room, like that you feel like you need to put all this information up to. Um, I mean, it, it really feel it really feels like there's um there's no real reason for any of this. This it, this it, is a slide you put up to prove that you did the work despite yes. the fact no yeah. one needs to see it. Mm. This is this, this is, is a, a bullet receipt point. slide, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a bullet point on somebody's officer uh OER which is officer ah, fuck I can't I can't remember what it is, but it's like your oh, officer evaluation report. Like every year you have to be uh, evaluated as an officer and an NCO. This is, I created the insane slide for Operation Warp Speed that nobody looked at. But fucking promote ahead of peers. Go ahead. Go for I'm, it. I'm imagining there was another larger slide next to this explaining all the acronyms. <laughs> and both of them were up for all of 25 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Like, So we've got XOs and AXOs, which I imagine is an assistant XO. But the XO is already a fucking assistant. We've, we've also got in the middle here, Chops Meyer. <laughs> uh, I, I assume chief of operations, but then why would it? Mm, I don't know. And chop plans, chop yeah, plans, chops, and I don't know what Orsa is. Um, just fantastic. CO dollar side Bugen, and and no, none of it's like standardized at all. So you have no. like you have an XO, but you also have a deputy on the next one over, and it's yeah. like it. There's, oh, there's, a, comp, this is there's a cop yeah. troller. <laughs> Man, the people who are listening to this in the audio only are going to be completely <laughs> lost. Well, it's a podcast with slides. We always tell you about the slides. That's right. That's yeah. right. Also, uh, shout out to Cyber Bartenstein in the middle there. I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> There's so many executive officers in here. There's like that's too many XOs. You need one. You have. I mean, it's uh, FDA Woodcock, DOD Bigger Staff. <laughs> <laughs> these are made up names. These are porn names. Somebody yeah, created said that, and Alice just said that's right. Yeah, yeah I said I that's would, right. Yeah, and you didn't laugh at all. It hurt my I'm feelings. sorry. No, it's fine. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, so, at, I'm trying to Alice. I'm staring at this, and I'm trying to like. Yeah, are you, you know, not aroused? 
Am I the only <laughs> this one here? Is, this, is, this is like the fucking lament configuration over here. This is You'll go mad looking into this for yeah, too long. Yeah. To <laughs> this is why I made an executive decision to move to the next slide. Range your brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the total uh, human potential, 100% of human potential is death. <laughs> yes. Total <laughs> exertion death. I... I understand so that on parentheses a, um, suspense close parentheses. Yeah. What? <laughs> I mean, like I, th I feel like this is more honest than usual in that it gets to the point of Ranger School as to almost kill you. Yes. But like, I, I, I love so much that it's expressed purely in terms of like effort, of force of will. Right. Ra Ra Ranger <laughs> School, very similar to chemotherapy, actually. Um, <laughs> I like how there's no standardization between the distance between the bars or anything. I just kind of see this as individual comfort ranges. I'm sitting somewhere with a box of Cheez-Its. Self-imposed limit is the I put the box of Cheez-Its away. The imposed stress is somebody makes me get up and go to the store to buy Cheez-Its. And then obviously death, because I have no Cheez-Its. <laughs> I just, when you lay it out like this, you, you end up thinking, okay, well clearly what I'm supposed to be doing is trying to spend as much of my life in this blue zone as possible. I was about to say, this is the same way Trump thinks about exercise. <laughs> on the whole, you have a limited number of hours thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah Trump, Trump thinks about exercise this way, except it accumulates, it doesn't go down. He's like, it, probably also one of those guys that thinks that you only get a certain amount of erections per lifetime, so oh, he's yeah, gotta keep absolutely. it down. Absolutely. What's the star, do you think, for? Underneath Ooh. increase individual performance, and then there's a star. I, Gold I have effort, truly no idea. <laughs> so it relates to this graph. Somebody was like, "It's too. There's too much white space. <laughs> yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> put put the, the Count Ross shield. That's the gold star you get for increased individual performance. Yeah, that's they right. Put it, they I, put it next to your name on the classroom wall. <laughs> so just keep in mind, everybody. School. Rangers are giving seventy five percent of it, but if you give twenty five percent more, <laughs> you're gonna fucking die. <laughs> And oh, I wonder, there's people, there's stuff above Ranger. There's like, you know, Delta and Special Forces. So yeah, where are they at on here? They're all so dead. They're, all yeah. dead. They're, they're getting increasingly closer to death, yeah. Yeah, they keep so, killing so each other is the problem. Individual comfort range is at about like 12%, right? So, so <laughs> what, what we're saying here is, if I get like six guys, that's the same as a Ranger. That's not bad. As long as, as they're all very good, comfortable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Six extremely comfortable guys, or two guys who are like sort of pushing it. Of yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say we could use this podcast for an example, but I am slightly uncomfortable because it's a little warm in my house right now. Cheese. So I think I'm more I'm more in the green zone here of the self-imposed <laughs> limit because I haven't turned my air conditioning on. So we got four. Yeah, collectively, yeah. we all get seventy-five percent of a ranger tab. We have like rang, <laughs> and then it's just cut off with a pair of scissors. <laughs> Thank God Nate wasn't able to join us. We'd all be dead. I was yeah. about to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay. Oh, what, okay next? what next? What <laughs> next? Motion sickness. When might you get it? That's 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 a screenshot from uh, either Operation Flashpoint or the first armed assault or Incredible. Delta Force Two. <laughs> Oh yeah, God. Yeah. This is another just like you know you could just give somebody information about motion. Like first off, who doesn't fucking know this about motion sickness and when you might get it? But like the and and look, I have I have definitely seen people throw up on a um, uh, on an airplane. But like, what is the guy with the gun? Like, is it motion sickness when you're playing? You you don't have your field of view on the video game. <laughs> Wide enough. Your goggles you get... are like steaming up a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is from the Special Operations Command, too. So, like, these guys have already pushed themselves beyond the point of range. All of these guys are experiencing motion sickness despite having died. Motion sickness is 90%. <laughs> I, I will say, I do like that they, they did subscribe to one of my PowerPoint philosophies, which is uh, black background, because it's easier on people's eyes. That is true, especially yeah. in a darkened room. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to uh, the people who are doing PowerPoint in uh, night mode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what next? <laughs> LSD <laughs> testing in the army. So we have two. This one and then the next one is also um, regarding drugs in the army. You know, we're not allowed to do fun things in the army, and one of those includes drugs. 
I included this because the middle picture is very obviously food coloring. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. That's like food coloring that I remember from, you know, my childhood. Uh, I think it would be really awesome if I could go and buy like red, green, yellow, and blue acid. Um, I like that there are these tabs next to a ruler that's done in centimeters because nobody in the army mm-hmm. knows metric system, so it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> <laughs> these are all gotten off of a Google image search, every one of these, and somebody oh, yeah. and just we, put yeah. LSD if, on it. If we go to the next one, this is this is a classic example of another subtype of army presentation brain. We have army <laughs> cop presentation brain, oh, because this is fully cop hooking both thumbs into his <laughs> belt and telling you some of the street names of LSD are Sid, or Acid or tabs or micro dot. I want to know who calls <laughs> acid Sid. I Here's like the thing song. about micro dots: you have room. There's room for that S. Yes. Why is it down there? Yeah, that, that's interesting. I like this one. That's a Internet Explorer logo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got Sid C I D and Sid S I D. Yeah, it's. Uh, Could you not like right? Google search more names for you, you for guys LSD? Remember the kid from Toy Story. It's even worse now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do some Sid and start like um, Frankensteining my child's toys together. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, well, I think we the also... bottom left one is a um, is a postage stamp too. Oh my god! It literally might be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just like porting someone to my chain of command because I see them lick the back of a <laughs> stamp. <laughs> Um, in 1998, maybe that could have gotten away. You, you may have done that. Like all of these make sense, except for the weird, like, um, bicycle stamp down. Like that looks like a tour de France stamp of some kind or like some kind. Yeah. There's Alps, there's day and night and everything. Yep. I don't know. Oh, yeah, totally. Tour, tour de France also very much connected with performance enhancing drugs. So yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm building a case here. Now. We have another one here from the IT sector, and uh, oh boy, is this... Uh, I want to do a slide about a cool piece of jargon that I've come up with, and I'm going to put it into everything <laughs> on that slide. I was about to say, this is a lot of quantum. Right? So, mm-hmm. the next couple of slides are, are one of my favorite, which is the freaking lasers on everything mm-hmm. um, movement of the military, where... You just have to have like red and blue lasers, much like G.I. Joe, connecting everything <laughs> together. Uh, a lot of you got your quantum communicate at no point in time is quantum explained on here. But we do have like an atomic shield for some reason that mm-hmm. is connected to a locked computer. Um, so apparently we have atomic computers now, which is new to me. I'm glad that we're moving towards the Fallout universe. Yeah, I mean, you, if we are going to have literally a don't, but they do exist. <laughs> Right. Yes, we managed yeah, to yeah. do Didn't like. Didn't IBM build a working quantum computer, or am I making that I up? I mean, there's been several working quantum computers which are not very powerful. Um, no, but, yeah, but now we're going to use them in in everything, and when yeah. we do, it's going to be quantum. Well, you could I've... literally take you could, if you just took quantum off of everything on here, it would make more sense. Like adding quantum just fucks it all up. That's what I feel like when this I is just, hear, it's a I've, list of things that already happen. You just put quantum in front. Yeah. Of it. When I hear <laughs> civilians using the term like warfighter, oh, like this is what that reminds me of. Yeah, you know what I mean. We're just like stop. Like I'm begging you to. I'm begging you to stop. Quantum communications and quantum radar is that not? And then quantum what? magnetronomy <laughs> sensing. We can do magnetronomy sensing from space now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've yeah, got, we will be able to with quantum. With quantum, we've got yes. a B two bomber. We have apparently just a tomahawk that's up in the air under quantum inertial navigation. It's quantum. It, it, we're going to use it for everything. It's it, it's a panacea, right? And that's that's why we can sell it to as many parts of the DoD as we possibly can. Yeah, sign uh, up for the ten dollar level of well, there's your problem for the quantum podcasts. Yes, uh, <laughs> you know if you want well, better podcasts. Your quantum. This thing, want this better thing, podcast, they got to be done quantum. This thing is, uh, especially like the quantum communication, because it seems to imply that they're using um, spooky action at a distance to transmit information, which is physically impossible. Oh, um, yeah. Violates several fundamental laws of physics. You say spooky action? Spooky action at a distance, yes. Do, do, do. <laughs> it's when you change the spin of one particle, when you measure its counter particle in another location, it changes the spin. Uh, instantly mm. as well, but you know, there's some kind of 
caveats there where you can't really use it to transmit information. I don't understand it completely. Yeah, but, Spe- but what if we did that a lot fucking more than I did, Ron? Yeah. Holy but shit. what if we did that quantumly? Then mm. it works. <laughs> you just got to think outside the box. This is true. Yeah, Ron, as I can tell, you're not a real war fighter. <laughs> this is right. why we lost in Afghanistan. Not enough That's quantum right. thinking. Thanks for quantum. nothing, Roz. Okay. <laughs> Can't maybe, play we, right maybe if we had like a, a quantum version of the spaghetti graph, we would Here, have fucking understood it. Here's an interestingly designed slide. Um, a roadmap to lasers. This looks Man. like this sh- looks like it should be one of those three panel, you know, like science project uh, things. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I kind of I, I, one thing I am grateful to Donald Trump for is the creation of the space force because I think you need some kind of institution like a heat sink that takes all of the guys who joined the military because they really, really wanted a laser gun or a rail gun, and just sort of like hives them off separately, sure. right? <laughs> Where they can't hurt anyone. Mm-hmm. Doesn't, the, doesn't the Navy have rail guns? Am I making that up? Yes, but it's like in they very, don't. very early days, yeah. And I they think. don't really work, and we also don't really have ammo for them. It's, it, it, it's one of those, like, one day maybe a rail gun is, is going to be you know, a, a thing. Um, They're going to wh- figure however, out how to make a solid metal slug cost more than a missile. Yeah, I want to. I want to <laughs> point out. Worry, they'll do it. I want to point out the image all the way to the left, where they had to Photoshop an airplane into a Photoshop <laughs> of an airplane. Yeah, and they just did it so badly. They're just like, no, just shrink it down. It's blue, and then just make a laser line. Yeah, shooting I'm not, this I'm down. I'm not gonna mask. The, I don't get paid enough to mask this airplane out to to put it in the thing. The second Absolutely thing, I, not. The second thing I want to point out is the URL underneath the second um, I was about image. to mention that, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah so someone, someone way in the back of the room can click that URL. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> yeah, you're waiting for the... And, and the thing is, that's not a clickable URL. So even if you do, like, hey, can I get the slide so I can go over these later and maybe uh, check, you would have to copy and paste that because even though in PowerPoint you can literally make a slide, you know, a, a, something like this clickable, um, every military website is insane like this. It's insanely long. It makes no sense because it's created by seven committees. There's five different civilian organizations involved in it. So you have something like this uh, in the end, which is just leading to a PDF, which just fucking print it out for me, man. It's a PDF. It's also the damnedest <laughs> thing I ever heard. Because don't you people love your abbreviations? <laughs> Get consistent, Francis. Whose Look, fault I, this is. Yeah, abbreviate this fucking URL. At least give me yeah. a tiny URL or something. You <laughs> Make know? it tactical. Yeah, that, yeah the, the the military hasn't discovered URL shorteners yet. And they because it's like, oh, it has to look, you know, I they they want to be able to look at it and see a dot org or a dot mil because otherwise it looks like spam. Like these are the these are the kinds of people who look at like, oh, uh, you know, a tiny URL. It's like mm, t.co that's that's going to take me to some kind of like yeah, i might fucking, as well I'm, be yeah. dot ru yeah. i am telling you i sent this to you click the fucking link no you know what fine i don't give a shit oh. don't look at it whatever <laughs> <laughs> now we got a we got an f35 one i do also like that half of this episode is an airing of grievances yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as it should be as it should be yeah um uh, it, it's the go anywhere do anything plane uh, and that's why we have to throw millions and no, millions. No, just keep the A10. I'm fucking begging you. I like that this we, plane we've is one days, ups the fucking day yeah. slash night capable. It's good <laughs> to know that you can use the plane at night. Can it fly in the rain yet? Uh, apparently, there's a lightning all storm going on in the night in the night side. Yeah. Yeah, it's all weather capable. And now, what I've lo- what I love here is yeah, we've one up ourselves. Said that at first, we no, have I we have the happened. non. The non-clickable link in a in a horizontal in a fucking <laughs> vertical oh my God. orientation. <laughs> That's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> Jesus, this is Lockheed Martin. This is not like some dipshit that made it either. This is like a an actual somebody is paid to do these. They pay civilians lots of money to be able to put these things together normally. And yeah, you've got like a. Oh, let's all crane our heads 90 degrees so that I can fill it. I can type this into my browser and download a PDF that I'm not going to read anyway. <laughs> hey, but it looks Actually, cool, which is the most important thing. That is Does important. it? Well, uh, it, it, it has lasers for like well, sensors. I do like that, lasers. Yeah. yeah. It just looks, it looks like it's shining a light. Like it's, it's an F-35 with a, a bunch of flashlights on the front. <laughs> yeah. The it, disco F-35. This has been done <laughs> by someone who double spaces after the comma. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> India through net centric operations. That's that's come on, man. I yeah, this is this is beautiful. Actually, I love this I, a lot. I don't know what is happening on this slide. I, I don't like the guy who made it knows either. No, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where I know is this plane proves... is creating the flag of Imperial Japan in front of it, but in yellow. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, at least it proves that this PowerPoint shit is not just an American phenomenon, right? Not even just a Western phenomenon, because here we have. Indian PowerPoint on like, is this meant to be a float? Is this meant to be like a, a floating parade, right? drive <laughs> in a parade? Like a parade float, yeah. yeah. Yeah, instead of instead of like dragging our ICBMs through the uh through a parade, they just do this and everybody's just I very think, I think this genuinely might be the idea. And if that's the case, that's hysterical. <laughs> How are we gonna get the lightning bolt? <laughs> <laughs> well, it says it says tableau design for Republic Day Parade 2017. Yeah, so but, yeah. yeah, so it is a float. <laughs> yeah, in two parts, it's got it's got a tiny little float at the front. I feel I like good. It's got your land and it's got your sea. You got to separate them so that the navy and the army feel special. <laughs> I like that the I like that the float is just a cube though. I love, it's a cube I love with to stuff join, on top. I love to join the Indian Air Force and have to make a big beach ball globe to put on a float. <laughs> you feel kind of better knowing it, though, right? Like it's not just us. <laughs> I like that they also the person that they have standing out in the ocean. They gave them a little bit of land to stand on because it's like, look, we understand that there is at least some rules of physics that we have to follow here. Yes. <laughs> I just that's like, how you establish air dominance through net centric operations. Yeah, and apparently, and then there's also like a bad Photoshop of somebody sitting in the AWACS, but it's underneath the AWACS, and then yes. there's a bunch of, I guess, <laughs> artillery pieces. I think are down there at the bottom. I don't have light. I don't have lightning bolts going towards them very much, so I don't know. Like some of these lightning bolts aren't really going towards anything. Did they just give this slide to like the float manufacturer and say, or just this? like, yeah, oh, just do this? <laughs> Oh my god. So, one other thing that I'm learning is that no one in the military knows how to expand a text field. No. Oh god, no. Nope. no. Or change font size. Supervis Super or likely rating. or to rating leave. <laughs> Excel 11% <laughs> and NT 40% poor. <laughs> Beautifully said, Roz. Beautifully said. <laughs> Source, Spherian, and Lou Harris mm -hmm. Associates, they got paid $350 million to mm -hmm. make the slide. I was about to yeah, say, so yeah. the next time, someone retired the next off time, of the slide. <laughs> the next time anybody ever like gets mad at you for taking Patreon money for being an ostensibly leftist podcast, send them this and be like, somebody made way more money doing this than I ever did. <laughs> so. We're actually, th this is the format you have to submit exit surveys for yes. Patreon. <laughs> <now>. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what else we got? All right, yeah. so now we're turning into some of the um, Ouroboros kind of ideas of... The, so so that big Afghanistan one was the main Ouroboros, but this is a very strange, like, constant circle. Like, okay, so what I understand... The fuck? How am I supposed to read this? I like understand a Jordan circle. Jordan Peterson diagram. So when there's competition, there's conflict, and then the deter the goes around it, but then we go back to competition. But also the reinforcing and the balancing, they're just two things that just go in. Like this is like if you took a you know a power plug and it was just a power plug on both sides and then plugged it into two. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's like one of those like male male leads that they put up Don't signs in stores that are like, these do not exist. They will not be made. Yes. We will not sell them. <laughs> this is incredibly dangerous and will kill you. Probably yeah. something that this is also trying to convey. Just incredible. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sun Tzu. <laughs> Sun Tzu. And scientific support. <laughs> Thanks, Klaus <laughs> Niemeyer. This is this is your brain on military academy. Yeah, this is this is what's the what's the name of that uh fucking the thing the Towers of Hanoi. Have you guys ever seen oh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. Is, this puzzle is, thing. Yeah. Yeah, they've mixed Sun Tzu and the Towers of Hanoi into <laughs> And like the ground, the ancients, like, okay, so our measurements of the ancient goes to the perceptions of reality today of mathematics. They had fucking mathematics back then. 
Like yes. they were doing measurement. Measurements are math. They also have calculation, which is fucking math. Also, it's especially back in the, the day, they had, <laughs> back in the day, they had victory. Today, we have success. I love that so much. Yeah, incredible. Well, yeah, just, yeah, that's, just incredible. That, that's how I would define Afghanistan. Is well, I like the idea is the the ancients didn't have mathematics, but they did have calculation. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have calculation. We have model application parentheses simulation. Yeah. Which probably is one of the previous slides we already went through. If Sun Tzu was so smart, why didn't he have fucking Excel? Why, why didn't, didn't he have, have power- operations yeah. analysis? <laughs> I want to see Sun Tzu's fucking PowerPoints. I want to see Clausewitz's PowerPoints. <laughs> War is PowerPoint continued by other means. <laughs> All right. So the next one is probably one that you guys have seen. Oh, I love the integrated survivability onion, mostly <laughs> because every time I see it, I get to think about how uh, training and what was it fucking training and research or doctrine command is called like Tardec in the top right. I always appreciate that. I think this is actually a pretty well, uh, good way to present this information. It, I don't it is. Think this it is, is a, a bad silly slide. metaphor, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I get the, I get the onion is the thing. This is this is the thing that I would say to a twink if they're also a spy. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like my sort of objectives leaving the house. Yeah. <laughs> the Alice Caldwell Kelly um, survivability, survivability <laughs> onion. Yeah, <laughs> just don't get to a hundred percent, or then you'll be dead. No. <laughs> All right, and then the next one is uh, I look. This is just I just call this oh. docking. Oh, that, that, that's uncomfortable to look at. Oh, wow. Very interesting interpretation of a Venn diagram, right? We here. all put our dongs together. <laughs> yeah, Milita- I mean, military operations other than war. I like that. Other than war is its own like bullet point, and it's moot w. <laughs> moot for. I don't even know what that well, could mean. It really rolls off the damn tongue. Tactical <laughs> actions. Battle, engagement, strike, attack, encounter, duel? Duel is on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you meet up with the Taliban in your office and just goes forward like, right, Ten I'm gonna pieces. fucking I'm gonna slap, slap it out with these this, guys. Slap the Taliban guy with his white glove. <laughs> You're like, here you go, I brought flintlock, smoothbore, flintlock pistols from home. No, you know, and this is- back at Sandhurst, they're like, why has our latest class had a 100% combat fatality <laughs> rate? This probably comes from somebody who read way too many of the Lord Flashman books. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, now you know I, it. I, I, <laughs> I read in, those in, in British- Afghanistan, that was fucking insane. Oh, hell yeah. In this British is, parlance, there is no difference between operational and tactical, as far as I know. This is oh, all this is, operational. This is, somebody went and um, did a thesaurus Google, uh, mm. and then just copy and pasted everything in here. Oh, yeah. Harassment. <laughs> <laughs> Gamergate is a tactical operation. <laughs> this is another example of a slide which has almost no information on it, which is presented in a fashion which is completely impossible to comprehend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. and it contains like a long list of bullet points in a format that is meant to like simplify your thing into fewer bullet points, this which will, is just incredible. This by viewing this slide, you actually know less at the end of looking at the slide <laughs> than had you not looked at it. <laughs> but also, you're wondering if you could fit another penis into your foreskin. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Never not wondering that. <laughs> Oh okay. god, this next one is just gore. This is gore. <laughs> I, I hate this next one so oh, this much. This is fun. I like this. Um, Ow. This Ow. one really... This one, uh, yeah, you really, can't look um, at this one too long. Oh, this yeah, is about to say. Oh yeah. This is, this is a mad... Like, oh, and I can shit. only... I can only imagine the reaction when this, like, like somebody hits next says next slide. Like some major somewhere says next slide, and some fucking sergeant hits a space bar, and the amount of psychic damage that happens in this room of like forty or fifty people immediately. Like Where are the weapons? This is, How can anybody tell? This info structure. Here's the thing. Clint Lawrence probably looked at this, and this is why war crimes happen. <laughs> this this looks to me. This looks to me like the a lot of this stuff was brought onto the slide gradually. Probably through like an animation. And half of this and then, is like, just I truly guess, unintelligible. Then you have the, the <laughs> joke at the end, which is where are the weapons that flashes up on screen? You know, I, I could sort of see that working. 
There's um, so many satellites that are copied and pasted and slightly tilted. Land mobile, surface mobile. What? Oh, I think so, uh, I think maybe if you're if you're some major or whatever who is doing this presentation, maybe don't try and do bits. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't. Yeah, I. Uh, so I'm a Navy SEAL now, right? Oh Ooh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, yeah. you've, you've given a hundred and ten percent. You've come. You've pushed through death, and you've <laughs> come aircraft. out the other side. More and Navy aircraft SEAL. Connected, connected via Link sixteen. Yo, we don't. We don't need any more aircraft connected via Link. Abolish the air force. Yeah, no, uh, give no, it back give to the it army. Back to the army, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm I'm sad that the army doesn't have any fixed wing um, aircraft, and the way to solve that is by giving us back the air force. Yeah, they get, have the give space back the force, force now. We don't need an air force. This yeah, is true, if, you, yeah. if you want, if you want to wear like a blue uniform now, go join the space force. Everyone else, grow up, join the army. <laughs> Be normal and join the air force. <laughs> <laughs> and. Here's okay. here's something I couldn't imagine trying to present. The Anaconda strategy yes. against Al Qaeda oh, in Iraq. Oh boy. My uh, Anaconda don't want none unless you got PowerPoint, <laughs> son. <laughs> Border points of entry improvements. Work with source uh, country. Syria I, I'm engagement. noticing I'm noticing on the bottom right detainee releases. Uh did any of those guys go on to uh maybe found ISIS? Yes, but don't worry about that. Yeah, you don't worry okay. about that. Counter okay. ethno secretarian pressures. Tribal uh -huh. awakenings. <laughs> Again, didn't did any of those guys go on to found ISIS? <laughs> oh my god. Also, I love non kinetics as an expression of like stuff where we don't kill anyone. I like um, on the bottom, my favorite is Intel Fusion, like it's some sort of like Korean Italian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, intelligence fusion centers work I, I worse really than a Korean like, Italian I restaurant. I really like that armed unmanned aerial vehicles, Intel Fusion, and Intel surveillance recon platforms all point to popular support. <laughs> <laughs> don't, Detainees, don't, don't, detainee don't, ops goes to ideology. Don't know about that. That one's true. <laughs> I think they I think they all point towards ideology. Really you don't have to put anything in here other than ideology, weapons, and money. What is the <laughs> what I don't understand is what is the anaconda here? You're squeezing uh, oh, you're, you're it, it's, it's a, a perfect, perfect strategy. It's a perfect staff officer thing. Because the Anaconda strategy is how the Union won the American Civil War by blockading ports of the Confederacy so it couldn't trade and then winning the land war. So this is such an a, a fucking staff ride to Gettysburg fucking PowerPoint. <laughs> Somebody like, went to West Point. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Of like, uh, I'm gonna give it this sort of cute name, and that way you can see. See that I'm, I'm, you know, a very serious military thinker. Probably in the same PowerPoint as the Sun Tzu thing. I wonder who the sons of Iraq are. I never, uh, never came across any of them. I don't know. Like when, when you look at some of these, it's like I don't know if they're if they're good or bad. Syria engagement. Like, why are we talking about that in Iraq? I think maybe they were trying to get them to close the border, and, and which then didn't work. I mean, was Al Qaeda even in Syria? Like, I, that's always been an ISIS thing, right? Yeah. Well, look, Syria has always been, just been its own thing, and then ISIS kind of showed up to party with everybody else. But uh, yeah, I don't understand why we've got to worry about that, unless, as you said, it's a uh, you know close the borders kind of thing. Uh, I'm, I'm reading here about the Sons of Iraq uh, coalitions between tribal sheiks and Al Anbar, as well as former Saddam Hussein Iraqi military officers, initially sponsored by the U.S. military. The sons of Iraq were virtually non-existent by 2013 oh, due to Iraqi Prime Minister <laughs> Nouri al-Maliki's unwillingness to integrate them into the security services. Sunnis formerly serving with the group were faced with options of becoming unemployed or joining the Islamic State of Iraq <laughs> and the Levant. I mean, nailed well, it once again. <laughs> this is what happened. See, they. This is what I'm worried about with uh, cutting off all this unemployment during COVID. Everybody's going to go join ISIS. <laughs> like, I don't have a job anymore. I'm going to go join ISIS. <laughs> hey, man. Well, here we have an alignment chart <laughs> <laughs> that is not aligned whatsoever. Yeah, a uh, mine-resistant armored I am, vehicle. I am begging you to expand your text boxes. 
<laughs> modernization a- has a strike through. We're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. And then it just like goes over itself. Like if you look under the first arrow at the end, it's got like firepower over overruns with the other text box. I like how also they're showing things that literally don't exist. Like under lethality on the first one, I don't know what those three little like bug things are down at the bottom. I have never seen those. They're from Halo. Yeah, I was about to say, that's, they're, they're the warthog from Halo. Well, not the warthog, but I am pretty sure they're from Halo. So these are, these are different types of units, right? So you have an infantry brigade combat team, a striker brigade combat team, and an armor brigade combat team. Exactly. Incidentally, fantastic bringing back brigade combat teams from the Second World War for that little boost of nostalgia. But like, they're all going to have different align, they're going to have different balances of these three qualities, mobility, protection, and lethality. But we've expressed those using clip art and text that runs over each other. Yes. So I can just, this is, this is, this one's really difficult for me because I can sort of pass this and sort of not. Like it, it almost makes sense to me and that hurts more. Yes. I'm a big fan of under IBC, uh, the infantry brigade combat team protection is another infographic that they've just shrunk down so much <laughs> yeah. that it becomes completely useless other than to see a tank that we have on another that we have on lethality and also there, a soldier for some reason. A very large and some, soldier like, and a very small tank. Unmanned vehicles that yeah. I don't know. This is this is confusing to me. What the hell is the mobility thing for the striker one? I, I also like uh, under the uh, armor brigade combat team where they put a uh, what looks like uh, a one 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 three, but it's photoshopped. They didn't like you know remove the white background, so it's just cutting into the one 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 three that's above it. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> I like just beautiful. I like it mobility for the infantry, whatever combat team. Uh, they all appear to be just on a jacked up, like, uh, you know those UTVs they ride in country music videos? Didn't they give a bunch of those to the Rangers, like the 75th oh, Ranger yeah. Regiment? Oh god. So, yeah, that's, I, and you know what, I've seen things like that, like, I, I was in Afghanistan in 04, and I've seen not necessarily the, uh, you know, tactile go-karts, um, but something like that. Like, those things are, like, pretty cool they've got uh you know instead of a um a driver's side mirror it's just got a pintle mount for a saw so you can drive and shoot at the same time pretty sweet oh uh, they stole that from the fucking long range desert group uh a classic of, of of like uh sort of arid uh arid temperature warfare since the second world war just blast across the desert in a big jeep machine gunning things great fantastic at uh, least those guys could, are living the dream you could uh you could uh, start that up and make good money just letting people do shit like that. Oh, One yeah, of my favorite absolutely. things that I've ever done in the military was uh, being the top of a, a Humvee with a 240 Bravo machine gunning targets on a target range, <laughs> not in an actual war, because I'm, I'm a journalist for the Army. I was a journalist for the Army. It was one of the few times I ever got to do anything cool in the military. <laughs> okay. Uh, Man-machine interface considerations. <laughs> Robo Ammon. Oh boy. Fourth dimension. What exactly is experience, is... audio, visual <laughs> sense, cognition knowledge? And do you see I, simplification? Arrow action. I feel like simplification was circled by whoever had to look at this. <laughs> yes. I, I, I badly want to crop the bit that just goes wisdom action into my Twitter header. Uh, <laughs> The Air Force is really, like, bad in particular about thinking about thinking. Like, as far as I remember, they're the inventor of the OODA loop. Uh, for like, oh god, what is it, fucking, like, something Orient Decide Act or whatever. And it's like, nobody, nobody thinks this way, you can't <laughs> make people do this. Yeah, it's Observe, Orient, Decide, and Act, and it's anytime you hear somebody say, we need to take, we need to consider the OODA loop, that's a bad leader because <laughs> they would have already done it. Basically, like the OODA loop is a thing that you should be doing as a leader, regardless. Oh my god! I, I, easy use fourth <laughs> dimension. Fourth I, dimension. What is that? I and and also like so many like pictures that are just repeated next yeah. to each other. Like two of them of these Air Force guy of you know pilots with you know they're cool pictures. Blow them up a little bit. <laughs> and then, and then the brain 
with the uh, pointing down <laughs> and yeah. look like it's <laughs> it looks it looks like it was put together by the time cube guy <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, now we have uh, how is rain formed from your uh, middle oh, school geography textbook. Oh yes, textbook. the uh, water cycle. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is I love this because it's the perfect tag yourself kind of thing. I'm just looking for, be. I'm I'm looking for Waldo in here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> A civil Wilmax. I'm not sure what that means. Civil air radar pedlin. There's so many things that. Makes no. There's a Humvee in the bottom right that says Laser Dazzler. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah. If I'm tagging like, myself, I'm definitely high power <laughs> microwaves. Laser, laser Dazzler is you, the guy gets up in the turret with one of those green lasers and just kind of like shines it in your eyes while driving around. You know, I could see I mean, something like this working in like a textbook, right? Something yeah, of this sort sure. of uh, format. You know, it's like okay, it shows what everything is doing. But again, in a presentation, there's no way you can make this information uh, make any sense if you're um, if you're just putting the slide up there for forty. No, even seconds. even if you're like adding in them one by one, you're gonna fucking forget what the first thing was by the time you get the last thing. This only works as like a textbook diagram. It's a lot, a lot of work for not a lot of payoff. <laughs> yeah, and and it always like you've got a lot of things that are like shooting. Like you've got some looks like a Patriot missile going off. You've got uh, some drones and whatnot but there's no enemy like who who's everybody shooting at like everybody's put po- there's no everybody's pointing at each other just shooting randomly up in the air and just kind of saying fuck it it looks Happy like year. it's richard scary's uh busy town uh, from the military. <laughs> anti-radiation <laughs> missiles do they have those yeah it, it's like uh fucking it, it owns them on the kind of radar that you use in an anti-air installation oh, okay. It's it's a seed thing. Um, okay, what else we got? Questions. Oh no, I skipped oh, yeah. My bad. This now, is just again. That's a script. That's a script. That's not a slide. Special, that's a script. Special kind of slide right here, common in college presentations, which is where you just copy the text onto the slide mm-hmm. and then you read it in a monotone voice. And then mm-hmm. you get bad marks for it. <laughs> yeah, or it becomes a tremendously successful podcast. Obviously. <laughs> That's why I only put pictures on the slides, and I put the notes in the notes, so no one knows mm-hmm. I'm reading them. <laughs> wait, wait, a, wait a goddamn second! Wait a goddamn second! Fourth paragraph: The United States subscription penetration crossed 95 at the end of Q2 2010. If we take out the demographic of five years and younger, the mobile penetration is now past 100. percent Yeah, everybody, everybody has a mobile phone and is dead. Yes. <laughs> apart, from, apart from people who are five years old and younger who are rangers. Yes. <laughs> All right, we got the we got the the fucking rain cycle again. Yeah. Uh, now this. Yeah, this is th- this is how a baby is formed. Oh boy, this is, and and <laughs> once again, completely oh. useless. Just a complete. There's no way you can print this. There's no way that you can present this. This has to there's, go with like a flag of some kind. Yeah, you have to like unfold this a shitload of times like and the, like put it on the floor like a playmat. It's the size of the Bayou Tapestry. <laughs> this is this is going to be like when America finally breaks down and we turn to warlords. This is going to be my flag. This will be my standard. <laughs> what is this slide supposed to say? It's so, the life cycle of a piece of equipment, right? Yeah, so it's like, logistics. Yeah. It's it's the lifestyle oh. of. Acquiring and getting rid of it when you're done with it. Which is, you know, it starts with a shitload of contracts and ends with just leave it by the side of the road in Afghanistan. (laughs) Light it on fire in Iraq. Give it to the the Taliban. (laughs) When when I I left Iraq in 2011 and uh, I had an old commander who was part of the unit that took over for, for me, and he was the last, you know, last people in Iraq, but you know, quote, last soldiers in Iraq for combat operations, and he was just like, man, it's wild, they just, like, set everything on fire. Like, they're just... <laughs> it's like, what, are we gonna ship this stuff home? And they're like, no, we'll just put it on, take the batteries out, put the batteries on that pile, and then put that on that file. And uh, he was just like, man, they would burn, like, big screen TVs, just 
Light it on fire. Throw it Man, probably fantastic to breathe all of that shit, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Well, he he absconded with a couple of, because he was public affairs as well, so he absconded with a couple of uh, really good P2 cameras. He's like, I'm not going to fucking set this shit on fire. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm going to hide it in my Connex and ship it home. I, I think if if you look at this, it, if you go into the far, far right, about halfway down under disposal, there's like a picture of a truck, a picture of a big pile of shit. Yep. I think that's where the burning it in Iraq mm -hmm. is located, uh, on see. this flag. It all ends with burning it in Iraq, or <laughs> throwing it in a trash can and hoping nobody saw you. Yeah, what, one of these is like a Taliban red unit guy, wearing <laughs> high top sneakers. <laughs> Alright, and then I just uh, got one more, uh, one more slide for you. Oh, if anybody has any questions. 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 Oh, God. I, I, this is the other thing, right? Is we talked about how the army doesn't teach you to do PowerPoint, but the one thing that's what worse than having... What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that's worse than having uh, a, a presentation by someone who doesn't have any training in PowerPoint is getting a presentation from someone who has a lot of training in PowerPoint. <laughs> because once they have too much training in PowerPoint, it becomes so formulaic that it's like, you start at the beginning, there is a joke. The joke is like really weak. And typically, I get these from like uh, like military history people because they all used to be army officers. It's like the guy comes up and he says, "Yeah, I used to be an armor officer for you know twenty years uh, because it beat walking or whatever." And you all kind of pretend to laugh. Yeah. Then they tell you what's going to be in the presentation. They present the shit. They tell you what was in the presentation, and then they do questions with another joke, and it just makes you want to fucking tear your hair out. That's uh, that's our podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> questions? Yeah. Any questions? So many, but I'll never have them answered. <laughs> yeah, that's why. We, yeah, <laughs> the next war we do, everybody's gonna have to wear motorcycle crash helmets. Yeah. Well, um, what do we learn about military powerpoints today? Uh, abolish the air force. Um, uh, fucking maybe do some kind of training and how to give a PowerPoint presentation. Maybe I think yeah. the, I think the fact that PowerPoints um impede the flow of information within the army is actually good in the war against American imperialism. Yeah, comrade PowerPoint. Yeah, comrade yeah. PowerPoint. He's been doing doing sterling service here. Yes. Yes, it's it's made us all dumber and uh, harder to parse any information. <laughs> I guess the question and is, what's the alternative? Look, you can, Vizio? You can yeah, Vizio you can would, be, would be my the 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 solution is to hire the Kinsey Institute to do all of our mm -hmm. powerpoints. Exactly, and Mayor Pete show up and uh, and and teach me how to do, uh, <laughs> you know, land war lasers and shit. I guess. Yeah, need I, I don't charts. know. Maybe fucking like rethink the possibility of like why why the fuck do you have to have why a central does everything army? Need to be a presentation, why, right, right, yeah. why, why do you need to have an army general staff in the first place? Why why are we still wedded to this Prussian mm. idea of what an army has to look like? Uh, what I'm hearing is abolish the officer corps, and I 100% yep. agree. <laughs> That's what I'm yep. saying. There's there's nothing that I need a major for that I can't get a sergeant first class to do. All right, <laughs> and really anything above sergeant first class is 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 sus as well. You're on the chopping block. <laughs> <laughs> get an officer thinking, man, Ulysses S. Grant's powerpoints must have been fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what. Uh, you know the, the historians that love to say, you know, what if uh, what if Hitler had won World War II? It's like, what if uh, Ulysses S. Grant had better PowerPoint presentations mm. to give to his troops <laughs> about trench foot and uh, properly eating your hardtack? <laughs> <laughs> Risk assessment: Don't stack three rifles uh, like uh, next to each other that way. Don't shit in the middle of the camp. Yes. <laughs> Just you know what that sounds like? You're cholera. trying to, as an American, it sounds like you're trying to tell me what to do, and I don't, mm -hmm. I don't appreciate <laughs> that. I was just thinking that. Stay on your side, Alice. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Now what? Right. Greetings, comrades. Hello. Many years ago, when I was young and stupid. I decided no, I, that what I wanted to be was an engineer. Oh, my sweet boy. Huge mistake. Bad, bad idea. But it was not the cool build things that fall down type, but the forces that want to kill you type. An electrical they all engineer. Do. They all do. Oh, no. For this, however, we were divided up into disciplines only in the second year, and we all did a common first year thing, uh, 
thing where we were taught incorrectly about the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. We Didn't did we do the, that? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. No, no. I meant, did we do that at Drexel? Uh, um, good question. I don't remember. I did engineering yeah. 101, 102. The, oh, engineering 101, 102, 103. Yeah, where they make you build the Lego robot and yeah, disassemble yeah. the camera. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then they make you do a stock market game because that's engineering now. Yep. yep make yep. you uh, make you build a Lego Tacoma Narrows bridge. Mm -hmm. I, no, we, they I, didn't give us that many you Lego pieces. You can see pieces. why I, I I left the engineering school <laughs> and decided to do actual math. <laughs> we did get to mess around with bridges and deflection testing using students as loads, so you could feel the bridge deflect when people walked onto it. However. This is from one of the excellent ideas when the electrical and mechanical engineering students would share a lab room and do an experiment. This was a straightforward task where we had created a circuit with a mechanical device and connected it to three-phase power. And note that this is Australia, so the voltage was in the 400 to 415 volt range. We would then take some readings and remove the power and reconfigure the circuit. The setup was such that we had three people. One person's only job was to turn on and off the power or hit the emergency stop button. One person who was an um, uh, uh, observer uh, who wrote down all the readings that were taken and instructed the person to power on and power off. Um, and one person whose job it was to reconfigure the circuit uh, and take some more readings. Since I'm uh, the lucky one, I got the configuration slash readings job. I see the helpful diagram here. Yes. Here's the person, here's the circuit, which is a box. Here's the power switch and stop button. I do appreciate the big stop button. Yes. yes. In addition, since we were a mixed discipline class, my lab group had one other electrical student and one mechanical student. We set up the experiment and began to power up the circuit and take the readings. The procedure was that the person on power would ask the observer if it was okay to turn on the power and the observer would indicate if it was or wasn't. The important part was that the power was not to be turned on unless the person was instructed to do so. First few times this went fine and I took some readings. The observer asked to have the power turned off and I got to reconfiguring the circuit. This took a little time and I was asked if I was okay by the observer and I responded that it would take me a little while to complete this. And he responded with an okay. And that is the last thing I remember as the mechanical engineer turned on the power. <laughs> the fuck? Jesus wept. <laughs> the next part was described to me afterwards because I blacked out. I don't know if any of you <laughs> had felt the kiss of sweet madam electricity, but I got 415 volts across my right hand, which caused all my muscles to contract in my hand and arm, leading me to punch myself in the face and collapse. <laughs> <laughs> Since we had trusted my safety to a mechanical engineer, they did the only logical thing and watched instead of hitting the big red button. <laughs> <laughs> then the lights went out as the safety switch in the building's main tower circuit cut in and disconnected all the power. Now, if this had been the final outcome, then it would have been a dumb thing that happened, but we have to get in some of the truly stupid design ideas at my university. This all took place in the electrical engineering building, which is up here, right? And all of our electrical labs were in it, but they also decided that the power for the entire university would be linked up to the switchboard in there. So by tripping the safety in the electrical building, I took out power across the entire university. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good for you, man. We had to wait two hours for the fire department to arrive as this was also hooked up to the fire alarm system and power could only be reconnected by them turning off the alarm and resetting the switchboard. Wait, wh wh why did the fire department take two hours to show up, incidentally? That's a good department. question. Maybe, maybe they had another fire somewhere. It's Australia, I can only imagine that this is probably some out in the middle of a desert somewhere. Oh yeah, they're hacking their way through the bush with machetes. <laughs> they, yeah. have to, they have to punch like five kangaroos to get there. <laughs> they, have to, they have to go through, you ever seen like those, uh, those uh, bush firemen, you know, and they, they have to get oh, the yeah, fire yeah, truck yeah. and it burns over. <laughs> 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 they have to do that like six times just to get there. Um, <laughs> as you can see here since we were good and loyal students we had a student union building that was available to any student that was a member of the student union um, and of course at this time it was compulsory to join the student union and I'm sure the whining of uh, right wing wussies have gotten rid of this 
but it was decades ago and we understood the collective action was good. And <laughs> the power outage was described by the student union newsletter as an unknown interruption to the power to the university. And the electrical <laughs> use, and I was never here. <laughs> <laughs> and the electrical engineering department was keen for people to not know that it was caused by students fucking up an experiment that they were in charge of. The mechanical engineering student faced no punishment for his stupidity, and I had a right arm that was numb for most of the day and sore for a week afterwards. I later dropped out of engineering to go and complete a computer science degree, but it was not the last time that sweet Madam Electricity would embrace me, but at a much lower voltage of 230 volts. Jesus. <laughs> Still, man. Hopefully I will stay far away from three-phase power, and now whenever I walk into an environment that has the possibility of electrical work, I memorize where that big red stop button is. That is a pretty good prank, though, to make another student punch themselves <laughs> unconscious and, and knock out power <laughs> to the entire university. <laughs> Seniors! <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Thanks for the enjoyable podcast exploring the peaks, uh, occasional, and troughs of uh, human achievement. Your sincerely reformed electrical engineering student. Shake hands with danger. Good lord. Um, all right, so our next episode is on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. No, it no, it's, no, it's not. No, it's not. I never it's agreed the, to change the gag. Yes, you did. It's the it's the well, you're I'm, outvoted on yeah, changing the gag. Matter, it's the fucking so. it's the Boston molasses flood. Uh, is the next episode. The you know what, I will Fuck. I will insert I will insert a new one. You present <laughs> the slides. Sometimes I make them. Yeah, in this case, Francis made the slides. This Francis, is true. thank you for coming yes, on. Francis, well, thank yeah. you for coming on. Where can people find more Francis content? Yeah, um, me and uh, my buddy Nate were uh, both ex-military, and we both hate the military, and uh, we both talk about that a lot. At what a hell of a way to die! Uh, hell of a way to die dot com for you know we got a store and everything, and we've got our own Patreon at Hell of a Way to Die, where we uh, I do all kinds of interviews, some military, some not. I also talk about uh, rural Missouri bullshit because I'm from St. Louis, so it's a little bit of everything. A little yeah, you got some dad content, a got, little bit of gardening, a little yeah. bit of grilling. It's a yeah. great podcast. All Nate, of us have been on it. Yes. Yeah, Nate and I talk for at least um, the first ten minutes about our gardens and uh, the things that we're cooking, because we're both like in our late 30s and you know white <laughs> male, so what else do we have going on for us? Oh yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, coming for on. having me. I was excited. I was really excited to uh to do this. I had fun. My pleasure. I had together, fun with the Osprey and I knew I was gonna have fun with this one. Yeah. Together we can abolish the Air Force. It is in mm -hmm. our hands. Yes. Just split it, you know, all the planes come to us and all the satellites go to Space Force. <laughs> Too easy. Oh, I have a commercial to put in. Uh October twenty sixth, I will be on the guest crit stream with um Michael and Kevin, who we had on for the uh, Calatrava episode, and also Kate Wagner. It is a uh, architecture criticism stream run by the folks over at Failed Architecture. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to promote this yet, so I might edit this out, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, this is going to be a fun time. Uh, I'll put the link in the description if I'm allowed to do so. <laughs> oh yeah, listen yeah. to that unless we had to redact it. Yes, exactly. And don't listen to it. <laughs> and if you guys need any if you guys need any powerpoint presentations done if you need me to help uh with changing that last slide let me know and i will put multiple bridges <laughs> different, different pixelations and different sizes on there for you I, I think as a bit we should genuinely have the last slide be something terrible that we've mocked up like that yes <laughs> a bunch of la a bunch of lasers coming out of the um, <laughs> coming out of the, the bridge the dead people of boston <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that was a podcast. That's a, that's, that's a fucking podcast. I'm going to stop my recording and I'm going to go right. to bed. Sounds good. <laughs>